ultimately, the history of the polyphonic synthesizer is so complex and it has so many elements that people may not know about that it's understanding that these terms can be thrown about in ways that turn them into being completely inaccurate or in error. And part of the reason I wanted to make this series was to address the actual history of the polyphonic synthesizer so that we can see how it developed and why we named things the, the way we did in order to distinguish them and categorize them and how companies have often used categorization as a marketing tool as opposed to an accurate means of describing what is happening. That com combined with, of course, the telephone aspect of the internet means that terms are, their meanings are changing very quickly and almost daily, and it's hard to keep up with. In this series, I just wanted to address these historical elements that led to how we interpret what a synthesizer is and what it does, how we interpret how many notes it plays. It's a really interesting, or it's interesting to me. If you're still watching, it must have been interesting to you. <laughs> How the history of synthesizers that play multiple notes came to be. It's a very, very fascinating thing. And hopefully, I hope that what I've described makes sense in such a way that you can at least come to a point where you can separate paraphonic and polyphonic and uh, describe them separately as separate things and overlapping occasionally things as well. I hope that this has been a good means of portraying to you the history of the polyphonic synthesizer and how that history has affected the terminology that we use today and hopefully to help solidify these definitions so that they're not lost in the wash of constant mildly inaccurate use, inaccurate use, or completely horrifyingly wrong use.